Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Sheen, your host. This is Money Matters. In this channel, we talk about money, finance, how to grow your money, how to invest your money, how to make money work hard for you. Guys, consider subscribing. If you haven't yet already, give me a thumbs up. Really helps out the channel. Pushes the YouTube algorithm to spread my channel to more and more people. I'm pushing up against 7,000 subscribers. That's absolutely amazing. Thank each and every one of you that support my channel, support my video, and find value in my opinion and my content. So let's get started. I have another company, a brand new company. It's another SPAC. Uh, so it is right here, Desktop Metal. So I briefly talked about Desktop Metal about a week ago on this video. Uh, just a brief overview of desktop metal uh, but here is a dedicated video on this stock uh, so the company is desktop metal it is a SPAC uh, that is going to bring it to the public markets and that is trine t-r-n-e is the ticker symbol here is the uh, the chart so it closed today at eleven dollars and fifty three cents uh, up 1.5 percent and you'll see this chart uh, the announcement was just a few a uh, few weeks ago uh, on the end of august august 28th is when uh, this this announcement came out and that this trine uh, acquisition corp is going to bring desktop metal to the public markets uh, so then you see it's been pretty much flying under the radar uh, you know it popped up to the highest about just only $12 uh, about $12.50 that is nothing uh, so it's really been flying under the radar still trading at $11.53 today so uh, desktop metal they are a 3d metal 3d printing company uh, and so they offer the fastest 3d printing technology on the market up to 100 times faster than legacy technologies uh, and this industry is estimated to grow from 12 billion to 146 billion uh, in the next desk in the next decade uh, and this shift is due to uh, instead of just 3d printing for prototyping uh, they have new systems coming out 3D printing metal for mass production. So the estimated post transaction equity of this company is going to be $2.5 billion and it's supposed to close fourth quarter of 2020. So the SPAC transaction is going to net them roughly $575 million in gross proceeds. Uh, and 275 of that is coming from the pipe investors. Uh, so these pipe investors got in about $10 a share. And so right now you could basically get into it at the same price that these uh, investors, uh, you know, these big time uh, if venture capitalists are getting in, uh, you could get in, and that's the beauty about SPACs. You could get in at the ground level. Uh, you could pay exactly about, about the same price uh, that, like I said, these big venture capital and these big firms are getting this uh, company at. We, as a retail investor, we're able to get in at the same price. And so that's why uh, I really like SPACs, uh, and that's why <laughs> the SPAC world has been uh, on fire. That's why a lot of people are getting into SPACs. And so here are some big names. So Baron Capital Group, uh, Chamath Polyhippatia, and J.B. Straubel. So Chamath Polyhiptia, a huge name in the venture capital firm, uh, so in the venture capital world. He's the one that brought space, uh, Virgin Galactic, to the public markets. He is also the CEO of Social Capital. He has two SPACs himself, uh, IPOC and IPOB. Uh, he is also in a lot of things. He's a big investor in Tesla. He's also an investor in MP Materials. That's another SPAC that I've talked about in the past. Uh, so, you know, he is in a lot of things and he just seems to know how to find very good very valuable uh, companies and he has uh, a, a good good track record the next name there uh, of interest is jb straubel he is one of the original co-founders of tesla uh, he is the one that really worked on tesla's battery in the very very beginning uh, so jb straubel uh, a big name in you know the silicon valley and venture capital world all right so chamath polyhippatia we're going to talk more about him so on august 31st just a few days after this announcement of the uh, SPAC was, uh, was released. He tweeted about this, uh, desktop metal leader in manufacturing 2.0, so that's basically 3D printing, uh, is going public and I helped lead their $275 million pipe. But then he goes on to tweet uh, that the technology matures from prototyping to high volume production. Uh, so this is the transition that Desktop Metal is doing. They're not only doing prototyping, uh, what they used to do uh, with their previous system, but now they're releasing two systems, I believe at the end of this year and the end of 2021 uh, they're going to release two additional systems that are going to be designed for mass production all right hit all right the next tweet over time desktop metals mode will be to sell the razor blades cartridges consumables versus the razors printers so that's exactly what i thought about the first time i looked into desktop metal uh, the business model is going to be a cash cow because of the consumables uh, everybody knows this it's like when you buy a printer a printer is cheap it's like 60 dollars you could buy a printer but in order when that when that ink runs out you're gonna have to shell out another 50 dollars 60 dollars 
for the ink. The ink is the, the most expensive part and that's how they get you. That's where the revenue is. Uh, it's the consumables. I know this because I work in a laboratory and we have uh, huge, huge machines that we run diagnostics, run tests on. Here's a picture of the machines I'm talking about. Uh, and look at this. This is where all the money is. These are the reagents. These are the consumables uh, that you have to keep on buying from the company. That is where the cash cow is. That's where all the money is. So a definitive agreement already has been signed between uh, Trine TRNE uh, and Desktop Metal. The additive manufacturing industry grew at 20% annual compound rate from 2006 to 2016. Uh, and it accelerated to 25% compound annual growth over the last three years. So there's an ETF out there, if you guys don't know, that specializes in 3D printing, uh, and it is this ARC ETF. Uh, it is PRNT, and so let me read ARC believes 3D printing is one of the highest growth potential industries in the economy and is set to transform the manufacturing landscape. So currently ARC does not own uh, any of desktop metal uh, and I, you know, I think it's because they're not actually public yet. So I would not be surprised as soon as this merger happens, uh, as soon as they're available on the public market, uh, that this company will appear in ARC's ETF. All right, so like I said previously, uh, the fastest 3D printing platform up to 100 times uh, the speed of legacy technologies. Uh, they are available in 60 plus countries. They have distribution already in 60 plus countries around the world. And like I just said earlier with the consumables, very, very high margin reoccurring uh, revenue streams, including consumables and service. Uh, they're gonna have again, $625 million on their balance sheet uh, post merger. All right, so check out this chart. They're expecting the 3D printing, uh, 3D metal printing to grow over 11X over the next decade, a 25% compound annual growth rate from 12 billion to 146 billion. Uh, in the next 10 years. So this is their product portfolio. They have four total systems. Uh, the only system that is currently out is the studio system, uh, the second one there. Uh, and this system is mainly to produce prototypes, uh, but they're having these two systems coming out, uh, the shop system coming out Q4 of 2020 and the production system coming out second half of 2021. These two systems are made for volume production. So mass production of 3D printed parts. And so that's why this is getting really, really interesting. Uh, mass production is a very different game uh, than prototyping. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys understand. You know, if you prototype something, you might have to have uh, four or five, maybe ten prototypes. You know, maybe twenty prototypes. Uh, but when you're mass producing something, you're you're talking about hundreds of thousands, millions uh, of these these prints that you're gonna you're gonna use for whatever you're producing. Uh, so that basically changes the entire game. So uh, the revenue stream is going to be 100x, 200x, whatever, 500x of what a what you were doing with the, just the production prototype system. Uh, so the massive, massive amount of gains, uh, uh, more consumables being used, uh, more services being used, et cetera, et cetera. So all right, guys, I'm gonna break down this graph over here on the left. Uh, this is basically desktop metals technology versus conventional manufacturing. Uh, so we're just gonna talk about casting. So this, this illustrates uh, just how cost effective desktop metal is uh, today uh, and how cost effective it will be in 2030. So you'll see this line for casting uh, coming down where it's meeting the red line of desktop metal. So what it's saying is basically, uh, if you do traditional casting, you would have to cast 100,000 uh, of those parts in order to be the same uh, the same cost effectiveness as using a desktop metal system today. In 2030, you would have to cast 1 million of those parts in order to be the same cost effectiveness uh, as desktop metal in 2030. All right, this illustrates the recurring revenue and the high margin of their platform. So this is their shop system, their smaller mass production system. So the first year, the system is gonna cost roughly $290,000 upfront, plus 33,000 in consumables. And you'll see year after year, there's about $80,000 uh, of consumables that you need for the system. So the gross margin starts out at just under 48% for their first year uh, and quickly goes up to over 50% uh, by year five. So the total 10 year lifetime of revenue from one system, one shop system, is roughly $1.1 million in revenue and $600,000 is gross profit. Now, when we talk about the production system, it is even a higher revenue and higher gross profit, $2.2 million upfront cost and $250,000 for the consumables in the first year. And the cumulative gross margin goes up even higher, starts out at just a little over 28% on the first year. But by year six, we hit about 52% and by year 10, we're just under 60%. So a total lifetime uh, revenue is $6.5 million for one of these production systems and $3.8 million is gross profit. All right, guys, so the big question is, am I going to invest in this company? So the short answer is no. Uh, the reason is number one, uh, I just, my portfolio is just massive. It's just getting 
way too overcrowded. I have too many companies uh, and I need to start trimming some positions. I'm really waiting on a lot of these SPACs to merge uh, and for me to make this the decision after they merge uh, to sell out or you know to do something with them to try to bring my, my portfolio down to something that's more manageable. Uh, and number two is I just don't have any spare cash right now because I'm all tied up uh, in the companies I am in now uh, and tied up in these SPACs and just waiting for waiting for the merger. Uh, those are the, the two top reasons. Uh, the number three reason uh, is this. So they're not really going to make any decent revenue in until at least uh, 2021, 2022, uh, $77 million in 2021, $165 million uh, in 2022. Uh, so not until 2023 are they going to be estimating to make uh, $300 28 million dollars uh, and the gross profit uh, is not going to be you know decent until 2023 2024 where they're expecting to do uh, 157 million uh, on gross profit and 306 million uh, on gross profit by 2024 so you know that is three or four years out and so uh, in my opinion there are some other companies some other specs that i could see a uh, better return in my opinion uh, in the next one to two years maybe three years uh, so that's the other reason and and that's not even that's not even a, a deal breaker you know if i did have uh, trimmed if I did trim my positions that I have in now and I had some extra cash I definitely would be getting into this uh, especially that it's you know under $12 right now uh, but the main reason is because I just need to trim my portfolio uh, and I just don't have <laughs> spare cash right now. So that's my answer. That's why I'm not currently invested in this one, uh, but it is really exciting. I do see massive growth and I do see uh, some big players uh, that are backing this. Uh, and like I said, I fully expect this after the merger, uh, after everything is settled, I do think I will see this, com this company uh, in the ARK ETF. Uh, and that is a huge vote of confidence. Uh, and you know, I think when that happens, the stock is going to skyrocket like nobody's business. So guys, that's my video. That's my analysis. That's my opinion. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet already. Give me a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. If you found value in this content, please do give that thumbs up. Catch you in the next one. Have an awesome week. Peace.